Uh, my name is Nahim Shoa. I'm a painter, an artist. A lot of people, when they paint black skin, they just use brown and umbers and um, black to mix up black skin. And I use an Impressionist palette, same palette as Monet. I only have blues, greens, purples, reds and yellows and oranges. I have no umber colours or blacks. It's exciting because, it, because, because I don't know. Still, I, I still have the fear of, oh my God, next to uh, Joseph Rapp Darby, is my painting going to look good or is it going to look... You never know. I, I always have that thought, I might look like a cartoon next to something. <laughs> anyway, but that's the fun of it. But that's also the great fun. And my own background is Middle Eastern and I'm, all my friends are from different backgrounds. Right from childhood, my first friends were mixed race. So I grew up in a world, uh, Notting Hill, when it was probably the most diverse place in the world at the time. So at one point I decided, I said, I've already painted quite a few friends. I've suddenly got these 10 paintings. This could become a project. When I started to paint this project about race, uh, I looked at all the history of art paintings. Most of them were of slaves or servants. So I wanted to paint individuality because most of the black paintings in history of art are called portrait of an African or, or not called anything. We don't know their names. So I wanted to paint Desiree's individuality, uh, Benga's individuality, Dan, Sandra, Ziggy, and so many other people. Uh, and this project was born to try and make a statement. Well, the Walker asked me to do an intervention display exhibition called Into the Light. Uh, the, the reason why I chose certain images, I wanted to kind of, first of all, to highlight masterpieces and to remind people that masterpieces are, have a force of nature to them, but they can get through time and, po and popularity, they become invisible. So if you watch people walking around the Walker, they often just read the labels and they barely look at the images. So I wanted to make by putting my black images next to these other images, I wanted people to look at both images freshly. So the painting of Benga, the back of Benga's head, I'd already painted Benga 10 times by then. I'd already done two giant heads that had, each one had taken me a year to paint. I, I had painted large heads before, but never something about 20 times life size. It took about eight months to paint, probably about He's coming twice a week for about six or seven hours. So about 14 hours a week for about eight months. And then something happened. It took a kind of power, almost like an icon, almost as a halo around it. That's where the title of the show is, Into the Light. So it is about black people looking into the future in a positive way. Another painting you've got, the Tissot, which is I've also got next, is the most quintessential, almost chocolate box family portrait. It's almost the, the generic one that you see now, the dog, the kids smiling. But, and it just says she's the wife of a cotton trader. So all this cotton wealth was built on slavery. And then my image as a contrast, which is the Notting Hill scene, which is my bedroom downstairs, you can see almost the same windows. When I painted my painting, I wasn't thinking of the Tiso. I was thinking of a lot of those Dutch paintings by Peter de Hoek and Vermeer. But I wanted to make a modern, what Britain represents today, a kind of group scene of now. There's Benga coming out of shadows, which is going to be next to the Augustus John. It's going to be the largest giant head in this exhibition. And to prove that black skin isn't black, I put Benga in the shadow. He's in, only the light is catching the nose. It made it even more challenging for myself. But it's also a symbolic painting because Benga looks anxious and it is, again, the theme. Out of the dark, into the light, basically. An attempt to break down those final racist elements in our society. But that painting has an anxiety about it because that's the world that we were facing. Uh, I've got a painting of James, I haven't mentioned that one, which was definitely painted under the influence of Lucian Freud because uh, he was one of my heroes. I've said already that I wanted to paint black skin as intensely as Lucian Freud painted white skin. So I wanted to kind of show that I had a homage and also that I can paint white skin as intensely as I painted black skin. My painting of Desiree Again, spent a year and a half 
painting uh, was based on the Balpic on Venus by Velasquez. I'm trying to paint Desiree naked in that naked portrait that Freud does. Uh, the sexuality is not something I'm, um, I'm uh, interested in. And then the final painting is the back of Benga uh, on the chair, which is uh, Benga looking away, it's called. It feels like a nude. It's only his back. Uh, you can't see his face. And again, he has this amazingly muscular body, Benga, but it's a gentle, quiet painting. It's a total contradiction. And it really was against those stereotypes that I have heard in so many dinner parties or oh, black people are aggressive or... So it was really like, I, it wasn't, I wasn't trying to illustrate it. I was just trying to paint Benga who he is, what his atmosphere is like. And so I love the rebelliousness of the Hockney. And I think in different ways, the Benga painting is rebellious in a very different way. My original project was, as I said, it's about individuality, painting people as they were. And because I had that kind of openness with them and that connection, the intimacy level was incredible. You know, I hope it's a big contrast in those rooms. And all my paintings are with these white frames and that's very intentional that it stands out against all these old paintings. And also, like a kind of Renaissance thing, it's like the idea of purity. So yeah, working with the walker now is like breath of fresh air. Uh, it is into the light, but it's a dream come true exhibition to me. To, to actually put my work next to Lucy and Freud. I'm 22, the painting of James I did when I was 22, Freud's about 28 in that painting. So it's nice that we're both men in our 20s. The Hockney, wow, I mean, it's, the period I love most of Hockney. I think it's a genius in that early phase. So yeah, great honour to, to have that tension between the two images. I, I think the Benga image is just as radical. It's painted in a slightly more classical kind of approach, but I think it's just as radical. I think a lot of my work, you haven't seen it like that before. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm trying to make a whisper, be able to cause an avalanche, if that's, if that's possible.